So today my talk will be about uh, this challenge to move from uh, special data infrastructure to open data platform. And uh, I will introduce how we handle to do that within the Georchestra project, which is an, OS, uh, an open source, free and open source software uh, to provide all SDI uh, components uh, for, uh, for a region or for uh, whatever uh, who, need, who need that. So to introduce myself, I'm uh, Florent Gravin. I'm the head of technology at Camp to Camp. Uh, I've been working in this ecosystem for uh, maybe 15 years now. And um, at Camp to Camp, Camp to Camp is a service provider, and we are really uh, implied in the special open source ecosystem. So we are contributors of many OS Geo projects like Geo Network, Geo Server, Open Layers. We try to be in the steering committee to be able to, to drive uh, the project. And uh, our, uh, our role as a, a service company is more to uh, integrate open source solution for customer needs. We don't have any product. We don't sell a product a license. So our business model is more to uh, promote innovation and try to pull uh, the customer within the direction where we want to innovate. So, uh, I will briefly introduce what is the landscape today between SDI and Open Data Platform. Then I will uh, introduce what is Georchestra and how we did the move to embrace the Open Data world coming from geospatial data. Then I will briefly uh, speak about some figures about Metropole Européenne de Lille, which has, is the, the a big city in France which has done this move and we'll see uh, how it goes for them. It's kind of a success story, and then I will conclude and open a discussion. So this is the, this is the actual uh, landscape. So from a while, from in Inspire and from different needs, people have started to build uh, geospatial data infrastructure, so it's geospatial data platforms, where it's only geospatial data. So you can recognize some bricks. So basically, you, have, you need to have a geospatial server, like GeoServer or MapServer or QGIS server, to publish your data set on the web and to deliver different services, OGC services, to be Inspire compliant. You also need to have a metadata catalog. So for instance, GeoNetwork or PCSW or other stuff, which provide the metadata and the discovery entry and the CSW entry point. And I show open layers, with which, which is an OS Geo uh, component as well, to display the map, etc. So this is a basic geospatial infrastructure stack. And a lot of uh, administrative units have them, especially in Europe, because it was mandatory from the Inspire uh, directive. And we see that at state level, at a, a region level, department level, city levels, but also in uh, the university level, research, uh, and even uh, proprietary like companies. So this is all what we know. And since like a decade, I would say that there was a new movement, which is the open data, where everybody was able to push their data, where we want uh, all the people and uh, the city and uh, the company to open their data, to share their data, so everything is, is transparent. And this, movement was completely split from the geospatial movement. So this is a bit uh, the, the, the goal of my talk, is how we can unify these two movements and how we can make that all this region that have a special infrastructure can embrace and host open data without having two platforms or two catalogs. So, what is your orchestra? Your orchestra is a, is a, a, a free and open source uh, software since 2009. And actually, it was one of the, it came out from Inspire, where a big region in France, Britannia, needed uh, geospatial infrastructure. So basically, they decided to took FOSS softwares, so OS Geo bricks, and just bring them and aggregate them together. So Geos Orchestra is nothing else but one Geo server, one Geo network, one map store to view the to, to visualize the data, plus some 
pet application like MViewer, which is data visualization viewer, GeoContrib, which is a way that people can um, uh, give what is happening on the street. If there is a hole on the street, they can report that, for instance. So it's a bunch of, it's a constellation of open source softwares, mostly OSGO softwares, and GeoOrchestra uh, bring the glue uh, uh, around that, like a proxy or a gateway upon that. So all these bricks are connected together through the same uh, authorization, authentication system, and the same way to handle the roles, the groups, and the credentials. So actually, if you just need if you w want to have a small uh, start with an SDI, publish your geospatial data, and you want a geo server, a geo network, and a map store, it's preferable to go with geo orchestra be because you, you have all this synchronization uh, between all the stacks, which is done uh, already. And you can remove one thing if you don't need it. For instance, I don't need geo network. You can go for a geo server and a map server. So this is geo what is geo orchestra. And it's distributed uh, in different manners, so it's easy to install it. You have a Docker composition, Kubernetes and Helm chart, Ansible, Maven packages, and you have a lot of service providers that can help you on the way. It's really focused on the community, which what is great in this community compared of other community that I belong to, uh, is that all the, 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 the users, the customers, they know well each others, and they really participate together to make improvement within the, the, the solution. So they are co-creators, co co-partners, and we work all together to bring fresh air into the community. And uh, it's really pleasant to work in this, in this manner. So it's a very healthy community. And uh, what proved that is that they have uh, written a manifesto, which is really clear about what is it, how it has been designed, why, how you can bring contribution to that, et cetera, et cetera. So it's really transparent, it's really healthy, and it's a great uh, project and community to dive in. At the moment, there is an incubation process to become an OSGO label. So maybe, Tom, you are going to be our uh, uh, parrain. I don't know how to say that. <laughs> Uh, so hopefully uh, next year it's going to be an OSG project, let's see. But uh, it's the, the philosophy. Uh, what is the audience? So it's, I, I told that there is state, region, uh, countries, departments, cities, uh, university, research centers, and so on. So it's very spread, mostly in France, but also worldwide and in Europe. And we really want that it can reach um, yes, other, other, co other community and other countries. So the challenge here is to embrace the open data world. So as I describe it, it's a pure geospatial infrastructure and it's only that. But since some years, people who were uh, administrating uh, uh, the, the Geo Orchestra were also meant to administrate the open data platform. But usually it could be different districts or different offices, like geospatial is from geographic, open data could be from st statistics. So it's, it's a huge challenge. So how we can do this shift and how we can move toward this goal? So this is the workflow how we want uh, GeoOrchestra to be now, and we want to simplify this workflow. Actually, if, if you think about it, it's already existing, but it's not easy to do that. So for instance, connect to data sources. I mean, through GeoServer, you can connect different data sources or PGO API, but is there any administration console for that? Uh, do you need to, to learn to use GeoServer, to use GeoNetwork, to use MapServer, et cetera? So the, the, the way here is really to ease the administration process of the data workflow. So we connect different data sources, then we prepare the data like we can change the attribute names, we can uh, apply a filter. So we, we really extract from the rough, rough database the, the, the data, how we want to share it to the public. Then we publish it through uh, different services, metadata, but visualization. And then we want to, to promote the discovery with an API, to providing an API and sharing to promote 
that people can reuse our data because this is the meaning of the data. It's not just to say, okay, I have uh, a patrimony of data sets, I am uh, Inspire compliant, but now people, they want that the data are used in an efficient way. So what do we need to do to, to move to, to that? So first, when we have a GeoOrchestra platform, so GeoServer, GeoNetwork, et cetera, we need to be able to host just open data and not geospatial data. So it was the first goal. Toward a unique catalog, as I, I described, there, 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 there can be um, open data soft, a CCAN, or other solution in, a, in a one website, and a geospatial uh, catalog on another website, both on the same city or on the same region. It's hard to, to maintain, it's hard to synchronize, because some geospatial data are open and some open data are geo. So you need to cross synchronize things and it's really hard to maintain. So the goal here is just to have one entry point. So here is the first thing that we did. It's not a big step, but it allowed our users through geo network to be able to provide open data within their catalog. How? Just by harvesting open data catalog. So it's just the first step. I have uh, a constellation of catalog within my institution. Maybe I have one, cat one geos catalog, one geo network, another geo network, an open data soft, a CCAN. And then we can harvest it all through geo network. So we have just one API and one entry point. And then we design the data hub, which is a, a new user interface based on geo network API but which targets open data need, which were inspired by open data catalog. So for instance, CCAN and open data soft, they provided a great new experience about the data and we got inspired by that to build the data hub. So this was the first step. And it has been done by Geo de France and it's in production uh, uh, for uh, two or three years now. And it is based on Geo Orchestra. Behind that, it's a Geo network and a Geo server and you have your open data platform, geo open data platform, where you can find both open data and geo data. But it's not, uh, it's not all. We also need our uh, user experience to be data centric. If we think of classic uh, uh, SDI, there is the metadata and there is a data. And when we speak about a catalog, it's a metadata catalog, but actually, in the open data world, we focus on data sets. And it's, it's quite important. So we got inspired by who you know, and uh, we try to provide the same user experience. So it means that now on the catalog, when you click on a data set, you just not uh, only have a, a huge description and all these metadata fields, which could be quite uh, 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 boring or repulsing, but we try to focus directly on the data and be able to see the data. So this is the, the uh, data-centric approach where it's slash data set and the UID and not slash metadata, for instance. And we can see if there is WMS, WFS, vector, GeoJSON, we can see them on the map. If there is GeoJSON features, CSV, Excel, or whatever, we can see them on the table and we can see them on uh, a data viz um, component and we can start to, to, to use the, the data and to take value out of it. All these components are within the data hub and here you see that you can export them and embed them as web component or iframe to a third party website so you can uh, easily refer to a data set. You, we should be able to directly download the data which is not really the focus, for instance, of Geo Network, but it is in Open Data Catalog. I need this data in this format. So we change a bit the experience toward this. And we need to reuse the data through an API. We reuse the data, it means that, for instance, a third party website will build an application, open my data, but maybe just open a subset with a filter, etc. So we focus on the different APIs and we provide a form to generate an API query that could be used elsewhere. So 
we host open data. We promote data, we are data centric, and now how to promote the data. So I talk about an API. In the, in the GeoServer world, there is WFS and OGC API that could help us. But it's not enough to really uh, promote our data because what we want, for instance, is data visualization, charts. And we can't do that with OGC features if the file is very big because you have to fetch all the data and then compute this chart on the client side. If you want that this chart could be generated directly from the server, you need to have different API or different service. It could be processes, but we want it to, st to, to stick within the OGC features API. So we want it to extend that. So an open data catalogs, CCAN and open data soft, they come with their own API. So we need to come with an API that uh, um, is OGC feature uh, compliant, but brings new abilities for data visualization, for uh, geospatial aggregation, statistics, and computing, but also to search within the data, which is very important. At the moment, on a platform, you cannot search within the data. You just search in the metadata catalog. So all these points help us on the way to be more an open data platform. Then open data authoring. I introduced this, uh, this, this diagram where we are not really doing open data because we are harvesting open data catalog. Where the goal here is to remove all the thing on the left and be standalone and, su and sufficient. So we introduce a new application as the data hub is the like fancy uh, search interface. We introduce the new editor within Geo Network and within the same technology, which will be a very simple editor to be able to, to uh, film open data and without any uh, um, problem with the, the schema, with ISO, with Inspire. We, you just define your form and you create your data, you push your data, and it's very easy. And that way, we will be able to remove uh, all our uh, dependency and host directly the open data within the catalog. So a huge uh, UX campaign has, has been made and we propose we are developing this uh, new application which is part of Geo Network and will be part of the orchestra. So a completely new editor to handle our open data catalog with a very uh, uh, simp simpler uh, user experience while authoring metadata. And then the loop is is, uh, is uh, almost uh, filled. We are autonomous in handling uh, the creation, the update of geospatial data set, but also um, uh, open data set which are not geo. We provide all the data through an API which it, uh, allow us to do data visualization, aggregation, analytics, and everything. We have two new tools, one for the maintainers and one for the users to be able to, to, take, to get value out of the data, and we are almost done. All this work has been driven by uh, some Geo Orchestra customers, and I will briefly introduce the Metropole Européenne de Lille, which is almost the first Geo Orchestra user who display themselves as an open data platform. For instance, they have removed Geo Server from Geo Orchestra, they don't need it anymore. And it's data.lillemetropole.fr, which is just like that. And the landing page is a data hub, a custom data hub. And there is no more CMS or whatever. It's just that. So it's just a georchestra. And all the links uh, link you to, to the other bricks of georchestra. So this is the open data catalog of Lille Metropole based on georchestra. And we provide a, a great experience about that. So it's in production. Uh, it has been in production for two weeks or three weeks, maybe. Uh, it allowed them to remove two subscriptions, to one to Open Datasoft and one to ISO Geo. They have removed everything. Um, the, the, the service transition has fared well. So it means that they cut the old APIs from Open Datasoft. And we opened our new APIs. And there is, uh, yes, uh, I don't know, the, it, it works. 
the continuation of the, of, the, of the service. And it brings best practices in data publishing because actually they figured out that with Open Data Soft, many people, they were pushing data without any quality. And here all the process has been cleaned and for them it's a very point of, a, a great point. Some figures. So uh, Metropole Europe and Delhi is uh, 11 cities which publish uh, data and data set. Uh, they have a uh, um, very big uh, data set like uh, rainfall every uh, quarter in uh, different places, waste collection with more than a million entries. And uh, the service that they provide is really uh, performant and stable. For instance, they have all the transportation data uh, refreshed every minute and everything passed through the orchestra. So it means that there is a provider for the transportation, the buses, etc. When there is issue, they send every minute the position, the problems, etc. It passes through the Orchestra API, and we can watch the data through the data hub, and we can use those data through the API from another um, uh, application. So for instance, this API I consume by worldwide services like uh, Google for transportation data. So it works and uh, for them it's, uh, it's a very big move. The perspective, it's not all done and we haven't really replaced uh, the, the, the open data catalog uh, in all regards. So for instance, they want to have a security layer. It means that if they want to protect some data, etc. So it's different from open data, but actually in open data, you want to protect some data. Then what is missing is the, it's the data ingestion system where we, pro we want to provide an experience like in open data soft where it's e really easy to connect to some databases, to uh, upload some files, to prepare your data set, change the attribute names, change the extent, etc. So the user experience is great for the, the maintainer of the platform to really decide what they want to publish instead of creating a SQL view uh, in PostGIS or, or thing like that. And generative AI, uh, we are investigating that at Camp to Camp. Uh, yes, to, to, to talk with G Orchestra uh, with a natural language. So for instance, I have something running, but just uh, you, you type your phrase and you, you can find the data of your platform and you can take action of your platform uh, from, uh, fr from this. So to conclude, uh, G Orchestra is uh, the promise is uh, that it's open and free. Uh, it's modular, it's accessible. And we try to, to all that we design within this project, we try to, to be transparent, to be the right way, to communicate, to, de to do it with an uh, open source way. So it's, it's, it's uh, usually harder and it, it costs more, but we think that it's beneficial for, uh, for everybody. So it's what we like to do and we want to do at, at Camp to Camp and this, uh, in within this community. Some links, uh, if you get the, the slides. And, uh, and that's it, thank you. If anyone uh, wants to, yeah. Hey, Florent, thanks for that presentation. So, so related to the aggregation statistics in, in, the, in, in the, the aggregation statistics, the faceted, uh, facet statistics. Uh, so, so we're bringing that now to OGC API records. And to me, it makes a lot of sense to also add that to OGC API features. So you would be able to, to do that thing. Are, are you implementing it in a similar way or, or how do you implement that? Yes, so uh, we, we are be for uh, introducing the facet uh, within OGC API records because we think that it's very useful in our, uh, for searching um, uh, metadata. Uh, so we are working with, uh, with Tom and other people. The question is, uh, do we need that for our features? Yes, of course. And actually it was one of the main goal of pushing that in records because we know that records will land in features. And it's very important to have the full text search, which is in record, and to have the facets uh, in OGC API features. So the experience while browsing to the data is really better that it is with WFS. Any more questions? Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm curious to, to, to understand if, if that would solve all your needs of creating these nice diagrams, or, or you need more. If what I presented uh, answer to the issue, you mean? Uh? Yeah, so, so these nice overview diagrams uh, with, with uh, statistics, so many features of this type, so many features of that type. You could manage that via uh, facet statistics. This? Yes. Which one? This one? This, this one, yeah. So th this one is, is more uh, like uh, you have data, for instance, about the rain, and you want to, re you, you have, every quarter you have one uh, figure per city, no, not per city, but per captor uh, uh, with, with the amount of rain. And it, you, wh what do you want to do with that? So it's, it's just that you wa we want to provide something that helps you to distribute the value over a city over a month, for instance. So it's just uh, aggregation, like a... Like a facet. Uh, yes, but complex, fa maybe more complex. Co yeah, more, so yeah, that's, that's where I'm heading. Eh? So, yeah. so what complexity do we need to add to facets to support this use case? Uh, I don't know, because we... we no, 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 it's yeah, just yeah. take some time to, to think about it. There is Joanna. different <laughs> level of aggregation in there, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah but, but it's a need eh, from, from a project. Yes, right. Okay, there's a question over there. Thank you. Uh, my organization currently has GeoServer and GeoNetwork. Mm -hmm. We are planning to start an open data catalog with also next to spatial data as BI data and documental data. Um, what would be the approach to like, um, now we have, if I understand correctly, GeoOrchestra has components of GeoNetwork and GeoServer in it. Yes. And how would we start with replacing GeoNetwork and GeoServer with GeoOrchestra? Okay, good, good question. Uh, I think it's not that hard. It means that you will need to install GeoOrchestra and then synchronize uh, your databases, your uh, data directory, etc. So for instance, GeoServer is also almost vanilla inside of GeoOrchestra. There is just the header uh, for the authorization and the credential, so you could uh, use, use the Jira server, uh, install Jira Orchestra, use the Jira server, copy paste the data dir, the data directory, and it's it's going to work uh, uh, honestly. Jira network is a bit harder because you will need to copy paste the databases, uh, etc., and maybe you will need to check that if you have role and groups. This will be erased and replaced by the top level uh, group management in your orchestra. So this is the only thing you need to carry about. But we can talk about that afterwards if you want to. Okay, I think we need to move for the following presentation. Yes. You can uh, grab Flora in the rest of the, the conference and, and talk to him. So let's thank the speaker again. Thank you, thank you, thank you.